Lily's Kitchen Dog Food, AKA Nestle. What's up everyone, my name is Cam, I'm a certified dog nutritionist, founder of The Dog Nutritionist, and this is my dog food review of Lily's Kitchen Dog Food. I am going to be reviewing a dry and a wet food from Lily's. We're gonna talk about the ingredients, if they are good quality, how they've been processed, and look at the balance of those ingredients to to measure up whether the recipes are healthy for your dog. I am also, in this dog food review, gonna talk about how we know what the healthiest diet is for dogs and how you can implement that diet uh, into your dog's life and alongside your own life at a cheap and cost-effective, uh, in a cost-effective way, affordable manner. Lily's Kitchen was bought recently by Nestle for 100 million pounds. And that is very much noteworthy because Nestle are not a company that is known for producing healthy products. If you look at all of the things that they produce, they tend to be long shelf life, you know, cheap cereals, products that they know that they can store on a shelf for a long time and make a good deal of money off. Lily's Kitchen is well branded, but are the ingredients any good and is the food healthy for your dog? That is what you're gonna find out in this video. In this particular review, I'm gonna look at their lamb dry dog food. If the recipe that you've bought is different to this, it doesn't matter, follow along. They will all follow a very similar recipe pattern, which will mean it, this review will give you a good indication of the food that you've bought. I will then look at the Lily's Kitchen Love and Pride dog food. This is a wet food that they brought out for Pride Week. This is just the commercialization of an event and it's just very typical of Nestle. I can't believe they made a dog food for Pride, I honestly. <laughs> uh, I would have thought that was a little bit insulting personally, but whatever. It's not about the pride, it's just about the fact that they'll commercialize anything, they're Nestle, and I want that to come across that you need to watch out for companies like this. So let's get into the lamb dry food recipe. We have 27% lamb, which is low. Um, a dog needs to be eating around 50 to 60% meat minimum, 27% lamb is very, very low. Then you have sweet potatoes and potatoes, which is 16%, then pea protein and potato protein. Pea protein and potato protein are just really low quality protein sources, nasty powdered foods. Um, the sweet potato and potatoes are gonna make up 36% of the meal in total, which is too many carbohydrates for a dog. Long-term diets on car high carb diets for dogs put pressure on their gut because they're less evolved to digest carbohydrates than us humans. They, they just haven't been eating them as long as we have and overusing them will cause digestive issues or may cause digestive issues in the future. I need to say may and I need to be very careful what I say within this dog food review because Nestle, Nestle are a company that slightly scare me when doing honest reviews, but it may not be the review that they want. So then they have 5% lamb liver, which is great. Lamb liver is a very healthy ingredient, hugely nutritious, um, but many of the water soluble vitamins that are extremely healthy, B vitamins in lamb liver, will have been lost during the processing. Then you have whole peas, 4%, bit of a nothing ingredient. Whole lentils, again, another nothing ingredient that dogs really can't digest and break down. Flax seeds, lamb gravy, that is to get the smell of the food, um, smelling nice so that your dog actually eats it, but it's not a healthy ingredient. Then miner minerals and botanicals, sunflower oil, pea fiber, and then a load of ingredients which are so irrelevant in terms of their proportioning and quantity within the recipe that they are only there for marketing material. Now let's get on to the love and pride tin of meat. <laughs> tin of a tinned, wet, smelly dog food for 
Pride Month. What's in the food? 60% beef, fresh beef, which is a good, that's a good amount of meat, must say. But then you have 3% potatoes, 3% carrots. And that only makes up 66%. And then you can't really work out where the rest of the food is coming from. Apples, broccoli, green beans, vitamins. It doesn't really give you a good indication. In terms of the protein percentages, 9.8% is pretty low for a uh, wet food. It needs to be around 12 to 13. Low fat, low in ash, which um, is where the minerals really come from. Yeah, average food, additives, locust bean gum. What is locust bean gum? I'm gonna look that up. Is a vegetable gum extract from the carob tree and is a thickening agent. I'm not a big fan of Lily's Kitchen. In fact, I really think they're sellouts and I don't think anyone should be buying these foods. They're expensive as well. You know, the dry food there costs 10 pounds per kilogram. You can feed your dog infinitely healthier food for less money. I'm gonna give you the simple and quickest version of how we know what the healthiest diet for a dog is. And without being condescending, to understand this part, you really need to understand what a dog is. And what a dog is, is how a wolf has evolved into the dog. It is the difference between the two that determines what a dog is. The wolf is the ancestor species of the dog. We domesticated the wolf and the adaptations to the wolf, the changes that were made, determine what a dog is. From a biological standpoint, dogs have changed their ability to digest non-meats and sociability. Those are the two genetic differences between dogs and wolves. The, the two main glaringly obvious genetic differences. The sociability part comes from us breeding the wolves that didn't shred our kids to pieces. The second part, the ability to digest non-meats, this is the most important part of what they should be eating, of course. Um, different dog breeds have developed different abilities to digest non-meats, and this is due to their exposure to non-meat diets, depending on the geography of where they came from. So the Saluki, for example, that was uh, originated in the Middle East, they are an ancient dog breed, 9,000 years old, and they've had the most amount of time and exposure to non-meats, to more starch-rich diets, which means they have more of the AMI B2 gene, uh, a gene that allows for the pancreas to produce amylase to digest non-meats. What do wolves eat? A range of meats, raw bone or a calcium source, some grasses, and maybe some berries. We still need to follow that pattern of a range of fresh foods, maybe three different types of meats that they get rotated around the year. You can do more than that. You need some organ because that's like the multivitamin, um, the meat being the protein, they get fat from, uh, they get energy from the fat. And then you have the raw bone. Dogs have a higher calcium requirement than other animals because they've evolved from this lineage of bone crunching carnivores. It wasn't just the wolf, their predecessor that ate bones. It was literally like four species that came before the wolf. There's 50 million years of evidence of these bone crunching carnivores. And you can still see that evidence in your dog's mouth. Quite literally, those razor sharp molars are for crunching teeth. Other evidence that dogs should be chewing bones is that periodontal disease is one of the most common issues that face modern dogs. And that's because they're not chewing bones, they're not getting raw bones. Then you have the non-meats and you can use the vegetables that your dog enjoys or the ones that provide health benefits. You can use fruits like berries, which have been shown to be anti-cancer, um, apple, you know, just incorporate these non-meats into your dog's diet. In terms of carbohydrates, I don't recommend you go over the 20% mark and try to use squash and sweet potato, which are easiest on your dog's digestion. That really is how you piece together an understanding of your dog's digestion. It is the difference between the wolf and the dog, and the differences aren't that big. 
Then you look at your own dog, you incorporate ingredients that work for them into that model, and that's how you keep your dog super, super healthy. All of that stuff on balancing all these diets, the NRC, National Research Council, the AAFCO feeding requirements, the FED, IAF feeding requirements, it's all nonsense. It's all total bullshit designed to scare you off making, making food. Look at any animal that exists. They just get a range of different things, but they stick to a general balance. If you want to understand how to do that, or if you need recipes, get the ultimate doggy handbook. <laughs> I don't know why I call it that. Get the ultimate dog food handbook. And also I've got a free dog nutrition course here on YouTube that you can watch to learn to learn more. All right, so that's how we know what the healthiest diet for a dog is. How can you do that at a cost-effective rate? Because meat prices are extortionate. Dogs need lots of meat. They need some variety. How can you do this when you know you, you wouldn't feed yourself a diet that high in meat and you wouldn't spend that much money on your own diet? Well, you can source cheap meat online. I buy venison from a venison wholesaler. I buy the off cuts, which are the bit that the butcher, it's like, I found that butchers are pretty lazy. They're not like razor sharp with trimming the fat off of the deer. And they leave loads of meat on there. And you buy the off cuts and you just separate the meat from the fat. And it only works out to be about five pounds per kilogram. You have all this lovely, wild reared venison meat for five pounds a kilogram. And that is pretty much cheaper than any dog food you can get. Once you can source meat for around, you know, 10 pounds, less than 10 pounds a kilogram, you can make a homemade meal for your dog cheaper than buying a pre-made meal. And those meals are made from fresh foods, ingredients your dog likes, so healthy, so natural, so healthy, it's going to it's going to keep them out of a vet and it's going to save you money in those vet bills and it's most importantly gonna mean that you get to spend as long as possible with your dog. So, we know what a healthy diet is. It is possible to do in a cost-effective manner if you do the research into meats, sourcing good quality cheap meats, and if you have the recipes which you can find in the Ultimate Dog Food Handbook. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and if you have, I've got loads more on my channel. Please do watch them and share them with your friends if you think that they need some dog nutrition advice, because everyone does. Everybody does. <laughs>